All right, so we'll uh, start where we uh, left off last session. And we were working on this, at least we started uh, looking at this particular problem. Problem is about uh, a survey or a poll conducted uh, by USA Today where they cross-tabulated two um, survey questions, right? They were, uh, USA Today was investigating the public's attitude toward a federal deficit. So each sampled citizen was classified as to whether they felt the government should reduce, increase, or had no opinion on the deficit. Uh, the sample results uh, of the study by gender are reported below. So, you know, as I think I may have mentioned this last session that uh, if you uh, take uh, uh, the Applied Business Research class, BA 428, uh, that you will likely apply uh, this particular test, especially when you cross-tabulate two variables. And the purpose of cross-tabulating two variables um, is to see if... Uh, one variable correlates with another variable, okay? So we looked at uh, the, uh, we identified uh, the response variable in this problem and the variable of interest, which is the response variable, is the opinion on uh, the reduction of the deficit. And uh, the predictor variable uh, or independent variable is gender. Uh, both of these variables are uh, categorical or qualitative. So in testing whether the uh, these two variables are independent or not uh, involves the chi-square application. So uh, in answer to number one, uh, what chi-square application is involved in the problem? Uh, this one involves uh, uh, testing independence uh, between uh, two categorical variables. All right, so that's uh, the uh, uh, test involved in the chi-square problem. So the next question is, uh, we set up the null and alternate hypothesis. So for the null hypothesis, uh, we will state that gender and uh, opinion on the deficit are independent. Meaning, you know, uh, you tell me the gender of the voter. I could not tell you whether, how, or in which way uh, will this voter have an opinion on the deficit. The uh, alternate hypothesis would say that gender and opinion uh, of, on the deficit are not independent. Meaning there's correlation between uh, gender and opinion such that we're able to evaluate the probability that if you gave me the gender of the voter, uh, we can tell uh, the likelihood uh, to a certain degree that this person will, will uh, be in favor of reducing or increasing or has no opinion on the deficit. All right, so for the third one, it asks for the calculated statistic. Uh, so for the calculated statistic, we're going to use the template to compute the chi-square, the computed chi-square given this uh, data set. All right, so I'm just going to copy this, paste that onto the template. Uh, are you seeing the template on your screens? Yes. Okay, thank you. So the appropriate uh, uh, test uh, involves a chi-square distribution testing independence between two categorical variables. So we click that. All right, so I'll input the information here. Uh, the class, we have female and then male. And uh, the, the uh, uh, 
opinions uh, reduce the deficit, increase the deficit, and no opinion. <clears throat> and we input here the frequencies observed. Five, and did it say the uh, significance level in the problem? Um, nope, so we'll just assume um, assume uh, significance level 0 0.05. Here's the output. Uh, the p-value is uh, the assumed uh, 0 0.05. Uh, so the output is given here. Okay. So we can now answer the following questions starting with the critical chi-square value. I mean, the calculated chi-square value. The calculated chi-square value is 43.578. Uh, the critical chi-square value is 5.991. And we observe that the computed chi-square value is well inside the reject HO region. Uh, which means that the associated p-value with that calculated statistic will be a very small number. Uh, so here we put, uh, uh, it's not zero, totally zero, but a number that is quite small, okay? Which means that the data that is presented here uh, represents a an extreme, extremely strong evidence uh, in rejecting the null hypothesis. So that would be the re decision rule would be to reject HO, okay? Data uh, is extreme, extremely strong evidence in support of in, in rejecting the null hypothesis. All right, so as far as number seven is concerned, uh, what conclusion, uh, meaning what's the answer to the question? Uh, the question is, is there a uh, correlation between the uh, opinion and gender of the voter? So I will say that gender and uh, opinion on the deficit are uh, dependent, right? Now, because we conclude that gender and opinion are correlated, it begs the question, you know, um, which group supports more this, you know, the reduction of the deficit or increasing the deficit or no opinion, all right? Now, if the null hypothesis uh, was not rejected, meaning if uh, this is true, then what we're, we're really saying is that there is no difference in how uh, the female and male will favor reduction, increasing or no opinion on the deficit, meaning the percent distribution of this group will be pretty much the same as the percent distribution of this group, okay? Now, when you conduct uh, research that involves two nominal variables, we do not report the frequencies, meaning we have to convert these numbers into comparable terms, okay? So what you see in this table are what we call as the observed frequencies. If you want to compare the numbers that are reported in this table, we need to convert them into relative uh, frequencies. Okay, in other words, you report your um, table uh, are the, the, the observations in terms of 
percentages. All right. So we will be converting each of these numbers into percentages. So let me just copy this uh, table uh, so I can fill in these cells here. So we will convert 244 as a percent. Now, this is something that you need to know too when you are uh, doing a cross tabulation of nominal variables uh, when you convert frequencies into percentages. And, and there are actually three ways that 244 can be converted into a percent, all right? One way is to convert 244 in relation to 549, okay? That is called column percent. So if you divide 244 by 549, and then 305 divided by 549, you're computing what is known as a column percent. Another way of converting uh, these frequencies into percent is by expressing 249 in relation to 506, okay? 194 in relation to 506, 68 in relation to 506. We call that the row percent. And then the third way of converting 244 into percent is by expressing 244 as a percent of this total, okay? Only one of these three percentages is the correct way. The two are incorrect way of expressing uh, percentages. So, one incorrect way of expressing this as a percent of is expressing this as a to, uh, as a, a percent of 506, okay? Meaning do not compute total percent. So you have only two choices, either row percent or column percent. So which of these two would be correct? I'm gonna say column percent. Uh, so you're converting this as 549? Yes. Okay. Um, actually, it's the other way. You want to convert <laughs> uh, this as a row percent. And now the question is, you know, why? Well, you have to always go back to your, uh, you know, definition of your independent variable. Because what we are really wanting to do is to convert the percent distribution within this group versus this group, okay? So we will convert 244 as a row percent. Does that, is that clear? Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so we will create a formula here that says female for this cell here, to this uh, S, five divided by 506, okay? Now, at this point, I think you are well versed in Excel, right? So you are familiar with, uh, when you create formulas in Excel, uh, you're familiar with the use of relative and absolute cell addresses. Because if you use that uh, to your advantage, uh, you can make a computation in Excel really efficiently, meaning create one formula in one cell and you can copy that formula within your worksheet. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I want to, you know, when I copy the formula in this cell, going this way, this way, I want to make sure that the divisor, V5, will always look to this number, to this column, okay? And then when I copy this formula down, I would want to use the, you know, make the row relative. So essentially we want to make the column absolute, but the row relative, okay? I made the 
column V absolute by adding that dollar sign in front of V. Okay, so press the enter key. There's the percent. Let me change the format to 48%, you know, uh, maybe one decimal should be sufficient. All right, let me complete this. I will uh, also sum up uh, this row. So since I now have a formula in this cell, I can just copy this down. And if I copy this down, if I created my formula correctly, the sum of uh, these two cells should be 100, uh, not those two cells, sorry. If I copy it across, the sum of the cells in this row should be equal to 100%. Okay, so let me copy that formula there and paste it here, okay? So my formula here is correct because this adds up to 100%. Now, uh, I can copy this down to, and I have 100%. Because we have converted these frequencies into relative frequencies, we can now ask the question, you know, you have a, you're, you're uh, looking at a voter who is male, what is, this person's likely opinion on the deficit. They would want to reduce the deficit. Reduce the deficit. What'd you say that, Zach? Um, because it's a 68% chance it's the highest. Right. Uh-huh. That's right. So, you know, uh, in terms of uh, between increasing or reducing the deficit, a male voter would likely opt for uh, reducing the deficit. How about the female group? Same thing, right? 48% versus 38%. And you can see that uh, uh, the bigger percentage of female compared to the male have uh, almost you know, twice uh, as many or as much uh, no opinion on the deficit. Okay, so does that uh, make sense? Especially this part here? Yes. All right, good. Okay, moving on to the next problem. All right. <clears throat> Uh, the director of advertising for the Carolina Sun Times, the largest newspaper in the Carolinas, is studying the relationship between the type of community in which a subscriber resides and the section of the newspaper he or she reads first. For a sample of readers she collected, uh, you know, here's the resulting um, data. Okay, again, it's a cross tabulation of two variables, y and x. So the question is at the zero five significance level, can we conclude there is a relationship between the type of community where the person resides and the section of the paper read first? Okay, so what is the response variable here? Which one are we interested in um, observing? And which one is uh, our predictor variable? So the response variable, the response variable would be uh, the number of readers that read a certain section of the newspaper first, correct? Okay, not, not, not the number uh, of readers. So the, uh, the response variable is which section is read first. Okay, and the uh, predictor variable is the uh, where subscriber resides. Both are categorical. So again, uh, this is a test for independence and we state the null and alternate hypotheses HO would be that 
section thread first and um, where subscriber resides are independent and then h1 are not independent and to uh, compute the statistic we will once again use the template so we have city suburb rural and national news sports and comics one seventy one twenty one thirty one twenty four one twelve ninety and ninety one hundred and eighty eight all right so here's the output and we observe here that um, look at where the location of, you know, where the computed statistics, uh, statistic is. It is inside the fail to reject HO region. So uh, the calculated statistic is 9.488. Uh, the critical statistic, oh, I'm sorry, I, uh, um, it shouldn't be that. The calculated statistic is 7.34. And the critical value is 9.488. The p-value of the test is 0.1190, quite large. So the answer to the question, is the null hypothesis rejected? No. Okay, we're saying that we don't have enough evidence to reject HO. So with this, we will conclude that the uh, section read first and re uh, where subscriber resides are independent. Okay, translation of this uh, conclusion. It means that the reading uh, pattern of folks in the city is the same as the reading pattern of the subscribers in the suburb and those in the rural areas. Okay, so let me state that here. Uh, translation, the uh, reading pattern of uh, subscribers in um, the city, suburb, and rural areas is the same. Okay, so as you see here, that uh, chi-square is pretty simple to implement. And really the, the, the uh, uh, significant um, thing to consider is being able to know which of the two categorical variables 
uh, is the independent variable and which one is the response variable. And the reason for that is as we explained here is that it tells us how to compute the percent distribution, especially when the conclusion is when we reject the null hypothesis because we want to be able to uh, compare the percent distribution. Okay. <clears throat> so in this case, we note that the where a subscriber resides is the independent variable. So if we were to compute, I'm not going to do this now. If you were to compute the percent distribution, it'll be row wise again. Any questions so far? All right, so let me ask you to do this. I'll give you five minutes, run the um, chi-square test and then go straight down to seven and tell me what, the con what, what your conclusion is with respect to the question that is posed in this problem. And here's the question. It says, is it reasonable to conclude that there is a relationship between the age of the policy holder? So that's the age. And whether or not the person filed a claim. Okay. So answer the question whether it is yes or no. Do that, you answer this question after you run the test. Do that while I type in the answers to the questions here. Why is uh, the response variable here is claim. And the predictor variable is age of age group. I will just say age. Now, age is, um, you know, a if you ask the question, how old are you? And the, the uh, data that you get is the actual age, then that is a, qual a quantitative data. But in this uh, example, age is presented in classes or in categorical uh, format. So age is presented as uh, categorical data. Okay. Since both claim are categorical data, the appropriate uh, chi-square test is, uh, well, this would be the test for independence of two categorical variables. And the null hypothesis, once again, uh, age and um, claim are independent. And H1 says that they're not. Okay, so who has the um, the uh, calculated chi-square statistic? Anybody who attempted the problem, at least using the template? I got an error. It says uh, divide by zero. I also um, got that error. You, you, you got zero? It says uh, divide by zero. DIV divided by zero. Uh, let me uh, try it on my template. Oh, uh, what's happening here? All right. Uh -huh. Oh, did you put a uh, label? You have to put the label. So let me put a label here. 
Okay, let me try that really quick. Oh, and then delete that. Okay, so you have to uh, change the labels uh, because what what this does is it looks up, uh, you know, if the this cell is empty, then it the cells in here are included in the computation. So make sure you have labels uh, associated with the rows and associated with the columns. So what is the label for uh, this group here? What age group is this? It's going to be 16 to 25. Oh, James? Oh, it's going to be 16 to 25. Okay. And, and then the next one's going to be 20, 26 to 40. Okay. And then 40 to 55. Thank you. And then and 50, 55 and older. Okay. Thank you. And then how about the uh, no claim? Is it correct? Oh, it's uh, cl it's claim and then no claim. Okay, claim and no claim. And here's the output. So uh, here's the output. What's the? Uh, let's go directly here. Um, is the null hypothesis rejected? Yes. Yes. Okay. And. Uh, what is the conclusion? They're not independent. Okay. What's the, what are they? Dependent. Yeah. Yeah. What are they? Be more specific. What, what are you referring to when you say they? You just have to rephrase what the, not the, you know, the hypothesis says. So the conclusion is that age and uh, claim whether a person has a claim or not are are dependent. Right. So meaning there is a relationship between the age of the uh, insured driver and whether the driver has a claim or not. So this person here, the, the claims department is claiming that uh, younger drivers have more accidents. Is that really true? Well, how do we, 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 we determined here that there is a correlation between the age and whether a person has a claim or not. So that begs the question, which age group is more uh, has more propensity to claim. So we need to, once again, to answer that question, we will need to convert this into percentages, right? Now, how do we convert these numbers into percentages? Across the rows? Across the rows, because we have this, uh, we declared that as the independent variable, correct. So I'm going to sum this, this up, which I will use the sums for computing the, oh, not, not the row, uh, not the column. I want the row sum, uh, which we will use to com convert the numbers into percentages. OK, so we'll say equals. 170 divided by 244, and we will make Q as uh, absolute so that uh, the column will always be referred to in computing the percent. We'll change the uh, to maybe one, you know, one decimal place should be sufficient. Convert that across and down. Now it's more apparent that uh, a particular age group tends to have more claim than other age groups, right? Here's a, what our a column of interest. Look at uh, the uh, younger 
stage group. 30% of them, approximately 30, or I mean, uh, the, the point estimate is like 30% of them have claim. Compared to a person who is getting older and older and older, that the, the percentage of claims drops. Okay? So have you ever wondered why your uh, car insurance rate is uh, quite high if you're in this age group? If you are in this age group, like Doug and I are, you know, we don't have as much uh, <coughs> propensity to, to have insurance claim. Well, actually, we are in this group, aren't we, Doug? Yeah, you had to give that out, didn't you? That's right, of course. <laughs> we have to be truthful, right? That's right. <laughs> okay. So questions on this problem? All right, um, let's move on to the next one then. <clears throat> a sample of employees at a large chemical plant was asked to indicate a preference for one of three pension plants. The results are given in this table. Question is, does it seem that there is a relationship between pension plan and the job classification. Okay, and the job classification is uh, presented in three groups, a supervisor, clerical, and labor. So obviously this is a test for independence again. And what is the response variable here? Here's the um, clue. Relationship between, I mean, uh, uh, indicate a preference for one of three pension plans. So they want to know uh, preference for pension plan. So that would be your uh, response variable. Uh, which makes the job class um, as the predictor variable. Okay, and I'm gonna skip the uh, of all these. We'll go straight to generating the chi-square statistic. Okay. So that's why when you get division error here again, because uh, we, we have extraneous labels on, this, uh, on the rows and we're missing a label here. So what is this? Supervisor is the first one. And then clerical is the next. And then the third one is? Labor. Labor, thank you. And how about the row, I mean the column labels? A, B, and C. Just A, B, and C? Okay, nothing special yeah. label. Thank you. Okay. And the significance level is 0 0.01. 0 0.01, all right. Thank you. So here you go. All right, so if we look at the p-value, and the p-value is quite small, isn't it? It's zero point, uh, almost zero. So, and if you look at the computed statistic where it lies in the, the distribution is way out in the rejection region. So the answer to here 
is yes, the null hypothesis is rejected. And by rejecting the null hypothesis, we will conclude that uh, there is a relationship. So there is a relationship between pension plan selected and job classification. So once again, there's the obvious question is, uh, if there is a relationship between job classification and pension plan selected, you know, if you were part of this group or this group or this group, which of the three pension plans will your group prefer? Okay. So since uh, the job classification uh, is in the rows, we will convert these numbers into row percentages again. So equals that divided by that. Change that to a dollar sign and change percent. One decimal place, across, there you go. So supervisors will tend to prefer more plan C. Clerical will tend to prefer more plan B. Whereas for labor, they will tend to prefer more plan A. Okay, so if you were part of the maybe HR and you were uh, de determining or deciding what which plan to purchase for which group, this is an information that you might want to use. Are we good? Okay, now here's a, a question that might be in his, you know his or her head. Is it always the case that the uh, row, because you know, in the three uh, examples we did, all the uh, predictor variables were in rows? Okay, is it always the case? The answer is no, because sometimes the a table can be uh, transposed, meaning this can be in columns and the plans can be in rows. Okay. When that is the case, then the computation of your percentages will be column percent instead of row percent. So what it, again, I'll stress the importance of knowing uh, that when you are dealing with a cro uh, cross tabulation like this, know which one is your independent variable. Because if you do that, if you know that, then compute, you will be able to compute the percentage uh, percentages correctly. Okay, any questions? Thoughts, ideas? Clear, are we clear on uh, the, the chi-square test? All right, so this one is a, a relatively, you know, uh, bloodless, if you will, <laughs> easy to uh, uh, easy to apply. Uh, the next topic, however, is a little bit more complicated than this. All right, so for our next, uh, so I think uh, I'll, I'll let you go early today, but just to give you a uh, a heads up on what we will be covering 
uh, in the next couple of weeks, we will be focusing on regression and correlation analysis. All right. In particular, we will be talking about uh, the uh, in chapter 13, I believe, we will be talking about the simple linear regression. All right, and then in the next chapter, we will be talking about the multiple linear regression. Uh, and we will spend um, more time in the simple linear regression chapter because most of the concepts that are used in multiple linear regression are introduced actually in this chapter. Okay, so we'll probably spend maybe two and a half to three sessions on the simple linear regression. All right, what's the difference between these two? Well, for the simple linear regression, you will be dealing with one quantitative response variable and one predictor variable. Whereas in the multiple linear regression, you will be dealing with one quantitative variable, response variable, but you'll be dealing with two, uh, using two or more predictor variables. And the relationship between X and Y is linear, meaning uh, for the simple linear regression, if you're looking at maybe say you have data uh, where you track say exam one, I think uh, one of this was one of the sample examples I did uh, when we started talking about chi-square analysis. Is there a correlation between exam one score and exam two score? And if I, if we had the, the data and plotted these uh, two variables in a scatter plot, uh, the relation, you know, it'll plot something similar to this. Okay, which means that, you know, uh, there is a linear relationship between these two. So this is what we will cover in chapter 13. Okay, that's a preview uh, to those two chapters. Any questions? Can you go back to the last problem, Professor? To which 36. one? The last problem we did, I think it was 36. Okay. All right. So if you're trying to determine whether to do rows or columns to find the percentage. Uh huh. So, like in this one, because the response variable is. the plan they select, and those are over the columns. So you basically do the opposite. Um, what do you mean uh, the opposite? Well, because, well. <laughs> because the response variable is the columns, uh -huh. you do the rows instead to find the... Well, yeah, that, I mean, uh, you can uh, think of it that way too. Uh, because if, if you know that this is the response variable, then it follows that this would be the uh, independent variable. Okay, so basically whatever is the independent variable, whether it's in rows or columns, that's what you, that's how you find the percentage. Correct, correct. Okay, gotcha. Okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome.